Hello and welcome to another episode of Second Hand Stories. This is a place where I tell you stories. What kind? Well, histories, mysteries and unbelievable histories. And today's story falls straight in the middle of an unbelievable history. And I'll keep telling you why every 5 minutes because it's incredible. The story I'm going to be telling you today is is something that has been in the news. You might have Uh, heard of it you might have read it uh, and i'm hoping that there will be a lot of things that i will be telling you about this that may surprise you and in any case i want you to enjoy this story because it is quite a story now before i begin let me just tell you this that the one thing i learned from researching the story is that everything about a heart transplant is unbelievable and david bennett's heart transplant was more unbelievable than most david bennett is 57 and he is arrived at a hospital with a heart problem it's pretty critical and his chances of survival are very poor the doctors have assessed him and they tell him something which is truly staggering they tell him that he will probably have to be the first person to undergo a procedure that has never been done before in human history the doctors tell him that his heart is in a very bad condition and though he needs a heart transplant a human heart wouldn't do he wouldn't survive it so they are proposing that they put a pig's heart instead David Bennett must have initially thought that the doctors were joking because it sounds like a hilarious practical joke if you played it outside of a hospital setting but when he must have seen the serious faces of the doctors he must have realized that they weren't kidding that this was a serious solution that was being presented to him and so after thinking about it for a while David Bennett said two things the first thing he said was i want to live and the second thing he said was but if i die then maybe you would have learned something that would help others and with that he agrees to go through with this operation now everything about a heart transplant is unbelievable okay it is the pinnacle of medicine it's right up there in terms of breakthroughs with the germ theory okay this is outstanding what we are now capable of and the first heart transplant was done in south africa by a doctor called dr christian barnard on 3rd december 1967 now dr christian barnard had been preparing for this uh, operation for a long time he had done this by performing a lot of heart transplants on dogs and then one day a grocer called louis washkansky walks into the hospital with a heart problem it's a very severe problem and he's critical the chances of surviving without a heart transplant are near zero which is why louis washkansky agrees to be the first person to undergo a heart transplant a heart transplant involves cutting out a beating heart taking it out and replacing it with another human being's heart that's what it is it is truly on the edge of science and fiction and this is what was going to happen in 1967 now after he agrees to do the heart transplant there is a long wait this is a wait for a donor because this heart has to belong to somebody before it belongs to you and this wait is long and it's difficult both louis washkansky and his wife and are frustrated because louis is slowly dying in the hospital and he can't understand why his case isn't proceeding as fast as he would like one day and leaves her husband after consoling him and is heading back home She is driving back home and along the way she sees a calamitous event. She sees an accident 
a drunk driver has hit two women who were crossing the road the women were a mother and a daughter the mother dies instantly and the daughter her name is denise darwal she is still alive so she's rushed to the hospital but at the hospital the doctors declare her brain dead her heart is still beating but she's gone so the doctors then go to the father and they ask him if he would be willing to donate her organs and emphatically the father says if you can't save her at least save someone else and which is how it was decided that it would be denise darwal's heart that would go into louis vashkansky the accident that ann vashkansky his wife while she was going home the accident that she witnessed she had no idea that it would be that very moment that would breathe life back into her husband like i said everything about a heart transplant is unbelievable now the the heart is in place and the operation can begin it's a tough operation but the decision of dr barnard to do it at all is equally difficult he's going to take this man's heart out and replace it if this doesn't work the consequences are going to be catastrophic because if louis vashkansky at the end of this operation does not open his eyes then dr bernard is going to be sent to jail under charges of murder those were the stakes under which this operation takes place and yet dr bernard decides to go through with it the operation is long and grueling it takes 9 hours of concentrated effort and finally it's done and the moment of truth arrives and then miraculously louis vashkansky opens his eyes and he's fine he is alive and he's smiling he is a middle aged man with a young woman's heart it's truly miraculous but this joyous moment was going to be short lived because 18 days later louis vashkansky passes away now what's important is that he did not die because of his heart he died because he was being given immunosuppressants so that his immunity didn't attack the new and foreign heart and because of this he was immunocompromised and he got pneumonia and passed away though it ended in tragedy it was still a major breakthrough and the year after it was done a 103 heart transplants took place and today almost 4000 people are given a new lease of life because of what happened in 1967 medical uh, procedures and post operative care have improved vastly which means that people who undergo a heart transplant today have a much longer uh, life span than 18 days In fact the NHS puts it to about 50% of the people who get a heart transplant 50% of them live for more than 10 years. In fact some have touched 25 and 30 years. But one thing of the process has not changed. And that one thing remains procuring of the organs. That still remains a problem and a huge problem. Because in India and almost everywhere else in the world the organs that can be taken especially for a heart transplant can only be taken from a person who's brain dead which leaves the person requiring a transplant with a very morbid wish if they wish to survive they must wish for someone else to die now even after a donor is found transporting the heart from the donor to the patient is another incredibly difficult and unbelievable task because the heart cannot stay outside a body for longer than 4 to 6 hours which basically means getting this heart to a patient is almost a job for tom cruise doctors have been known to carry a heart in an ice box and then get on to helicopters and fly to a hospital where a patient desperately waits for this organ Now it's truly uh, race against time thriller esque stuff, okay? And it's not without danger. Like for example, there was this one incident that took place in November twenty twenty. 
it's a miraculous event here's what happens a helicopter crashes containing a human heart this helicopter was transporting the heart to a hospital and it was supposed to land on the roof but as it approached the roof it lost control and it skidded sideways and it lands on its side unbelievably the three people in it survive firefighters rush to the roof and with an equipment called the jaws of life they pry the metal open retrieve the heart and give it to a frantic medical worker and even more unbelievably this medical worker trips and falls dropping the organ even more unbelievably the organ survives the helicopter crash and the clumsy medical worker and is transplanted successfully into a patient like i said every heart transplant is unbelievable now finding a donor finding a donor who matches your criteria and then transporting the organ are all extremely difficult things they're all almost improbable because it's so difficult to procure organs which is why there is a huge wait list a wait list is a list of people who are merely waiting for organs to become available so that they can save their lives this wait is long and insufferable the average wait times are so long that many die before the organ becomes available now because of this because of this lopsided supply and demand of course crime starts festering right now organ trade has become a huge part of the the black market right it's a huge business in fact india used to be considered at one point the great organ bazaar right because until 1994 we didn't even have a law against the sale of organs in the country that coupled with the fact that we're a nation that has a culture of bribery and corruption and a large a uh, number of people who are in desperate need of money it basically makes it a perfect place for rich and desperate recipients patients exploiting poor people for their organs there was in 1995 there was a racket that was busted called the kidney tours racket here poor people were given money and an air ticket and then flown to another country where their organs were harvested hundreds of people went through this before it finally was discovered closer to our date in 2008 uh there was a racket that was busted from gurgaon where a doctor had performed 600 operations over 6 to 7 years and here's how he used to do it he used to lure people in with the promise of work and once they showed up he would give them 30000 bucks for their kidney people who refused were drugged and their kidney taken regardless and these are the cases we know of there are thousands and thousands of such stories all across the world there was in fact in the 1920s in america there was a horrible thing that was going on men were waking up they were drugged and they were waking up having their testicles stolen it was a terrible predicament and the reason it was being done was because at the time testosterone was a hormone that wasn't understood which is why many people including doctors believed that if you wanted to increase a man's virility his manliness and his desire for fornication then you needed to transplant more testicles to the ones he already had it was a very more the merrier situation so there was in fact there was a doctor a urologist called frank lidston who had grafted the testicles of a dead man onto his scrotum his colleague was shocked one day when he saw lidstein take off his shirt and there was testicular tissue strapped to his chest this was what was going on and you can imagine that people weren't really willingly being donors for this kind of program but that didn't stop rich and important men from taking it from them anyway and here's the sad part if we hadn't understood testosterone testicular robbery would still be going on today so now with everything i've told you right you can imagine how difficult it is to get organs from people which is why science has always looked to animals for organs taking an organ from an animal and putting it into a human being is a process called xenotransplantation and it's been around for a long time like consider the case of 
Baby Fay. Baby Fay was a child who was born in 1984 and she was born with a heart defect and it was urgent and critical and she needed a heart transplant but they were unable to find an infant's heart which is why in desperation the doctors decided to transplant the heart of a baboon the baboon they could pick from it did not match her blood type and though she survived the operation she died 21 days later the reason the transplant didn't work was because her immune system immediately attacked the foreign baboon heart in addition the blood type of the baboon did not match that of fay now it's this immunological response coupled with the vast physiological differences between humans and animals that has prevented the success of zeno transplantation that is until now everything about a heart transplant is unbelievable and david bennett's transplant is more unbelievable than most because he was not given a human heart but a pig's and not just any pig he was given the heart of a genetically modified pig gene editing had been performed on this pig before birth removing any genes that would be responsible for immediate rejection when this heart was placed in a human body the pig was then raised in a controlled bio sealed environment until it was old enough for its organs to be the right size for transplantation then the organs were harvested and the heart was placed inside dave bennett this was an operation that lasted for 7 hours with the doctors carefully and surgically placed a pig's heart inside david bennett and at the end of it david bennett was alive the heart hadn't been rejected by the body and so far the operation was a success Bennett's son called the moment a miracle of science and it was because the success of this operation might help solve the acute shortage of organs giving hope to millions of people who languish on the wait list but this thing wasn't with the, without its issues there were many issues for example the first one being that David Bennett and everyone else who decides to go through with it now at this point in time are essentially guinea pigs we don't know what is going to happen with a pig's heart inside a human being we're going to find out and is going to come at the cost of david bennett and the next few patients the next thing is obviously animal rights because is it all right to see animals as just bags of meat that we are harvesting for our organs and thirdly there is disease because the pandemic we're going through right now has reportedly sprung from an animal to a human being now we're implanting organs into human beings we do not know what diseases might come forth in the future and there was yet to be one more troubling twist in the tale as david bennett opened his eyes and the doctors realized that he was fine he instantly made world wide headlines it was a miracle a pig's heart had been put into a human being a breakthrough had been achieved he was instantly celebrated all across the world as a miracle but while the rest of the world viewed it as a miracle there was one family that saw it very differently they didn't think of david bennett as a miracle they knew he was a criminal because in 1988 david bennett had stabbed a man called ed schumacher and he had left him paralyzed he had been tried in a court and he had been sentenced to 10 years in prison this was the man that had been splashed across every single newspaper around the whole world and the schumacher family was extremely upset in response the doctors did say that they cannot discriminate who is a patient and who isn't they do not look at the past of a person they look at his current medical needs where the schumacher saw a criminal the doctors saw a patient like i said 
everything about a heart transplant is unbelievable including the person who got it so that's the story i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please leave a like and a comment i read every single comment especially the good ones and if there is a story that you'd like me to cover then please leave it in the comment section below one last request uh, if you've heard the story then one other thing you could take away from it is that the world needs donors and if you could register for it it would be great because someone may need your organs when you definitely do not also as usual this episode is brought to you by my career if you'd like to support my career then please check the description because there'll be links for shows i'm going to be doing soon like for example if you're free on jan 23rd then do come by for a zoom show that i'll be doing you can watch it from wherever you are in the world and it's a lot of fun so do come by and until next time bye bye